JWST has discovered a brand new exoplanet for the very first time. Excitingly, it's a rocky world that's almost the exact same size as Earth, and it's not even that far from us. Our newest neighbour is called LHS 475b, and the star it orbits was specifically targeted by JWST after another telescope called TESS, the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, which is specifically designed to look for new exoplanets saw suggestions of a planet, but it couldn't confirm it. That's right, JWST is so good that it's been able to confirm a new exoplanet when a special exoplanet telescope couldn't do it. Rocky, Earth-sized planets like this are too small for JWST, or actually any current telescope, to image directly. So any images I show you, or any you see anywhere talking about this, are all artists' impressions, probably including the thumbnail of this video. Instead, we have the light curve that confirms the discovery, and an early spectrum of the planet's atmosphere too. What JWST did was point at the star that this new planet orbits, which is only 41 light years from us, and the star system is called LHS 475. No B for the star system. And it recorded how much light it received from that star. As the planet orbits this star, it will pass in front of that star in what's called a transit. During this, it will block some of the light that we should receive, and so the total amount of light we receive decreases. The planet then keeps on in its orbit, as it does, and we then see the amount of light increase once the planet is no longer blocking anything. That's how lots of planets are discovered, including this one, and without needing a direct image of the planet. The amount of light that's blocked also tells us the size of the planet, and this one is 99% the diameter of the Earth. That's a pretty good friend to have. The data was so good that the discovery was confirmed after only two transits of the star. And usually we would need way more than that with another telescope. So it's amazing how quickly we could confirm this new planet with JWST. Here we can see one of those transits in the light curve on August 31st, 2022. And you can even see exactly how long it takes from the time on the horizontal axis. I think it's in Baltimore time because that's where the team that talks to the telescope is based, at the Space Telescope Science Institute. It looks like it's just an hour or so, so that's a pretty short amount of time for a planet to transit a star. And that tells us that the planet is very close to its star. In fact, it's closer to its star than any planet in our solar system is to the Sun, and it completes a whole orbit of its star in just two Earth days. That star that it orbits is also a type of star called a red dwarf, which are much smaller and cooler than stars like our own sun. This means that despite being so close to it, the planet might still have an atmosphere. Whereas if a planet was that close to our sun, it probably wouldn't have an atmosphere because it would be stripped away by the harsh solar radiation it would get if it was so close. But that said, even if it does have an atmosphere, this would be a pretty hard place for us humans to live since its proximity to its star means that it will be a few hundred degrees warmer than Earth currently is. Also, I only say that this planet might have an atmosphere, because although JWST did take a spectrum of the planet, which could reveal an atmosphere, the data isn't yet good enough to confirm the presence of one. Don't worry though, more observing time will improve the data. And with a planet this tantalizing to study, I'm sure that will happen pretty soon. Incidentally, if you want to know more about how exoplanets are discovered or how spectra tell us about the composition of an atmosphere, then check out this video up here, where I go into all of it in way more detail. The amazing thing here is actually that we got any information at all. The planet is so small. And actually, that's how we know it's a rocky planet. Gas planets just can't quite be that small. So we know it has to be rocky, just like Earth. Most telescopes can only take spectra of the huge gas giant exoplanets. And in fact, JWST is the only instrument currently flying that can take data like this of small rocky planets. It's the only thing with good enough resolution. That data doesn't yet confirm any individual molecules or elements present in the atmosphere, but it does already teach us some things. The spectrum here shows lots of interesting things, even without confirming anything too specific. The white dots you're seeing on this plot are the real data from JWST, and they tell us how much light of a specific wavelength was seen. The yellow, completely flat line is where all of the data points would sit if the planet had no atmosphere at all. The thing is, the data are all close enough to that line that statistically, we can't rule out that being the case just yet. The purple line is what we would see if the atmosphere was made of 100% carbon dioxide. And again, all of the data points are close enough that we can't rule this out either just yet. 
If this were the case, and in the future we detected clouds on the planet, then in fact it would be a planet more similar to Venus than to Earth. Since Venus does have a pretty much entirely carbon dioxide atmosphere, and it's covered in clouds. On the other hand, the green line is what we would see if the atmosphere was made completely of methane. And this one, we can already rule out. That's because just here, looking at the 3.3 micron wavelength of light, we see more light than we should if the atmosphere was all methane. You can tell that just because there aren't any white dots particularly close to the green line here. They're all way below it. Methane atmospheres actually are possible. Saturn's big moon Titan does have one. But in this case, that can't be what's going on. More detailed data in the future will reveal individual elements or distinguish a pure CO2 atmosphere from nothing at all. And interestingly, a pure CO2 atmosphere is especially challenging to detect since it's heavier and therefore more compact around the planet than something like a methane one would be. For now, JWST is just getting started, but it's already bringing us closer to understanding Earth-like worlds well beyond our solar system. Give me your thoughts in the comments below and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.